hi everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm your host, Lana, and we also have Teresa with us as our co-host. Um, so we'll give a brief introduction um, about our lovely guest host that we have. Um, so first, let's talk about Andrea. So Andrea here is a, um, a current MFA student at Cal State. Uh, she also got her bachelor's in arts uh, at Cal State as well. Um, and a lot of her work focuses on, you know, body positivity, and then I believe it's a lot like, you know, like sculpture and things like that, talking about, you know, her self-image and self-acceptance. Um, we also have Fred Bashir here. Um, he went to CSUSB for his undergrad MS and his MFA as well. Um, currently, he's a professor at three colleges, um, and he has some opportunities with uh, LA, as well as an upcoming book, which sounds really exciting. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. Um, so I guess today we're just going to kind of talk about, you know, what is the MFA, what it's really like, and, you know, what people can expect. Um, so Andrea, why don't we go ahead and start with you? Um, and what's something that you didn't anticipate going into an art degree? Um, I think it was the community base between the grads and how um, you just like kind of become a family. I didn't know that going in because uh, you don't really have that as an undergrad. Um, so like you were together all the time, like 24 hours sometimes, like we're there throughout the middle of the night working in our studios, trying to meet our critique deadlines and finishing our work. So it's it's like a, having a second family. So that I did not know coming in and it's such a sweet surprise. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Fred, would you say it was the same experience with you, you know, going in? Absolutely, you know, it was, um, it was, it was refreshing to say the least um, coming into uh, uh, the program and, you know, being accepted and being kind of part of this, uh, you know, like an extended family. But the one thing that I really probably did not anticipate was the competitiveness of um, the program and of the people around you, right? Because they really, really do push you to become the best artist that you can possibly be. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that part too. Yeah. It's like, you gotta keep, you know, you gotta, you want to be the best, like in crit, like, you know, you go into crits and you're like, oh my God, I love this piece. And then like, it's read totally differently. And you're like, well, okay. I, and then, you know, you have someone else goes and you, they have like an awesome crit, which is great. And you're just like, okay, I need to like step my game up so I can have that feeling too. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a little competition. <laughs> Everything definitely. <laughs> right. and, you know, just to touch on that, I can imagine it'd be difficult because you know, at least because right now I'm working my undergrad in art as well. Um, and, you know, currently from my experience, it's like you're always being challenged to you know do more, to do better, you know, to really improve from your last project and to you know really think outside the box. And in a way, for me, it could be you know really challenging at least creatively because you know you have to keep you know pushing and improving. Um, so just to kind of touch on that, it's kind of funny because people always say, you know, art is like the easy degree and, you know, STEM, you know, all the sciences, that's, you know, the difficult stuff. So what do you guys think about that? Art is not easy. I mean, I struggle with it every single day. Like, you know, it's not like, um, it's definitely different. Like I'm not saying science and math isn't easy because that's, that's, um, that's hard like you know but like it's just art I feel like it's more you know you're trying to find like your inner um self and you're expressing yourself a lot and to put that into the world that's nerve-wracking and that's super hard and like you know again like working on a piece that you're so passionate about and not have the concept come through and not read correctly like that that takes a toll on you and keeping up too like it's hard. <laughs> it's a lot of judgment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's always interesting because, you know, it's easy to say that when you're on the outside looking in, right? Yeah. If you've ever really gone through the grind of, you know, an art degree or a program, you, you, you quickly realize that it is just that it is a grind right? You're, you know, you're being critiqued and your messages might not be conveyed properly. Your, your, your methods might be lacking. The history might be lacking. And so you kind of always have to remain in this, in this state of versatility when you're in, in an art school, 
and, and in the art program. Mm -hmm. Also, I think part of it too is, you know, when it comes to like lab, you know, things like that, it's like you do the work and you get the grade. And like, if you do poorly, it's like, okay, I'll do better next time. But I feel like with art, you know, it's a piece of yourself that you're making. And so when it's not received well, it's, it's more of like disheartening in a way because, you know, you feel, you know, yourself. It's more of like an emotional impact and something that you really have to work with. Totally, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because like you really put your soul into each of your like pieces. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that each piece is your story. Mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting as a lot of people say that, oh, art is such an easy degree compared to STEM and like other things like that. But on the contrary, people say that it's not a very good thing to have a career in. What are your guys' opinions on that statement that a lot of people do make? Yeah, I get it a lot. <laughs> you know, like the, you know, being a working artist, jumping from couch to couch, like, you know, like kind of like, you know, you're not going to make it and stuff, but, you know, success is um, different. It has a different definition by each person, you know, um, success might be money amount, success might be a level of happiness and achievement. Um, so I think it depends on like the person, like, um, like Fred said, it's a grind. You gotta, you gotta work, you know, <laughs> like, and, um, it's, if you're truly, so, if you're passionate about something truly, like it's, go, uh, it, it's going to happen. It's going to be successful. So, you know, like there's that whole like stereotype of artists, but you know, we got to break through the mold. <laughs> mm -hmm. So personally, what did each of you define success in the art field as? Ooh. Oh, oh boy. Go ahead, Fred. You um, go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, look. If, if my message is being conveyed and the audience and my viewers are, are able to recognize what I'm trying to convey in the work that I'm making, then uh, it's a success, all right? Yeah. Um, you know, the art world, I didn't go into uh, the field of art to make money necessarily, right? It was more of, you know, an indication of to me being able to point at something and say, hey, this is what's going on. This is the bigger picture and we need to be aware of this situation, right? Um, and, you know, yeah, we do put our, our heart and soul into the work and we do, there is a little piece of us that dies when, you know, those messages are, are not understood or are not conveyed and the, you know, the audience kind of walks away with a different idea that you were trying to put out there um, to begin with. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, art is always going to be subjective. Um, but, uh, you know, as artists, we are, you know, an idea of this global community and we have to point and kind of bring attention to these topics that um, are bigger on a, on a societal scale. All right, definitely. Um, and I guess on that note, I feel like I personally am curious and I know a lot of the audience of, why don't we briefly talk about, you know, each of your guys' you know, some of your projects that you've done, um, you know, maybe some past, some current, and maybe something that you plan for in the future. So whoever wants to go ahead. Um, for it, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm working on my thesis. I'm graduating in May and it's, you know, I'm working on the concept, what I'm trying to say, and all my pieces. I'm going, I'm going very large. I haven't gone large in um, ceramics. Um, I make sculptures out of clay. Um, so this is a huge challenge for me. And I think like, this is my last graduate show. So I gotta go big or go home, you know? So I'm um, making a lot of pieces. I'm making eight total pieces. Um, it, it's very challenging right now in the virtual, like being in the virtual world. So I have to show virtually, which I'm so grateful that I can show it. Um, so I'm just dealing with um, staging pretty much. Um, maybe tweaking it and I'll have it such as a um, gallery staging, but more like virtually staging, if that makes sense. So um, I work in, I, my message is about body positivity. I just want everyone to love themselves and be the best they can be and be beautiful in their own skin as we all are. So I really hope like when people view my show, they'll like, you know, gain that confidence that we all have. It's, some of it's just hidden deep inside and she needs to come out, you know, but, um, so I am currently like working a lot, building big. Um, I've had some 
ups and downs, <laughs> but you know, you're pushing it through. And um, luckily, like I do have a studio to work in. So I'm very grateful, but um, yeah, I'm just making it work. <laughs> so that's my upcoming piece. My past projects have been in galleries. Um, so um, I've done like really cool, not so interactive, but some interactive. When I got my first master's at CSUN, um, my thesis show was all like, they were on turntables and there was like this like glitter like rim around it. So when the lights were shining on it, like, you know, it was like shining confidence. So I like to do stuff with that, with my work to get, you know, the audience more engaged in it and kind of show out my little extraness. <laughs> but yeah, so. <laughs> that sounds great. I wish you could have seen it. Um, so what about you, Fred? What are some of the things that you've either done in the past, current, or in the future? Well, my, um, when I graduated, my uh, thesis project was very much uh, indication looking at um, the endemic species of the Joshua tree and this idea of memory, trauma, and uh, history. Um, and the idea of the reduction of the Joshua tree woodlands due to uh, human encroachment into the desert areas. Um, and so um, from that project, I created paper and I um, was able to, you know, work through um, methodology of being able to adhere images onto this paper from um, uh, Joshua Tree uh, materials that I was able to collect from a construction site. And now um, I'm still very much working on that as that is an ongoing project, but also I've taken on some other side projects and a couple of the projects that I'm looking at right now, again, kind of are running in that same vein as far as um, history and memory of the landscape. Um, I'm looking at the, the idea of, you know, the, um, uh, the history of the Inland Empire as far as the uh, citrus industry was concerned and, and how certain um, markers with these um, still exist with these groves being gone. And so I'm kind of documenting these historical markers and then also kind of looking at this idea of um, the shifting landscape. So I'm documenting and um, I'm photographing the uh, San Andreas Fault um, from the southern um, most uh, southernmost tip to the northernmost tip. So kind of looking at that as well. Wow. Um, and it, it's obvious to me, you know, that both you guys have a lot of passion and you're really interested in art. Um, I know for me personally, like art has always been part of my life, but it was only within, I think the past like six to nine months that I actually decided to, you know, actually pursue a degree because like for me, I'm like, oh, I'll just keep it as a hobby. Um, so for you guys, did you always know that you wanted to pursue an art degree or was it something like like something you had to realize along the way that yes I want to commit my life to art <laughs> no um I came into art really late too <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean I've always <clears throat> growing up like I always wanted to design um you know work with uh, fashion a lot, but then I decided to go to school for marine biology <laughs> because science and math was something else I was really good at, you know, and my parents really pushed that. So I had a lot of like, you know, pressure on that because again, they didn't think the art will, you know, would cut out. But um, I had to take a art class um, at CSUN and um, I took ceramics. And after that, I was just like, okay, I have this, weird hidden talent in this medium um so I kind of just like found myself you know at the studio more and working more and um you know getting more in touch with my creative side that I lost um so I was like in a show and I like ran home and I was like mom I do not want to do this I want to be an artist and you know it was scary but I got like full support and now um it I wouldn't change anything like this. It was like the best moment I've ever made. And, you know, I'm doing something I really love and I'm passionate about. I get to wake up and, you know, make wonderful work. <laughs> so I will, I'm so happy. But yeah, so I came in late too. You know, you just got to keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I honestly, I'm in the same boat. You know, I, uh, Career-wise, uh, you know, I uh, initially, when I was growing up, I either wanted to be an astronomer or an archaeologist. And so there was, you know, always this sense of adventure. And so very much the, the career choices that I made 
um, as a young adult, you know, led me kind of to those, 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 that, that kind of pathway, right? I was a, an agricultural tech for the state and I was, you know, inspecting uh, insects and things like that and, and produce. And then um, after that became a wildland firefighter for a number of years. And so I've got to travel and, and experience that as well. And, you know, along the way, always trying to, you know, attain credits for a certain degree and whether it was fire science, whether it was biology, whether it was entomology, whatever the case may be, computer science even at one point. And um, after my career in firefighting ended, I, you know, I, I had always taken photographs during, during our journeys when we would fight fires. And so I was, you know, very much into that thread of, of, of uh, photography. And so my very first um, experience as a photographer outside of firefighting was um, I got an internship at the Daily Press with no kind of schooling whatsoever as far as photography was concerned. And so um, that's what really kind of propelled me into uh, uh, the, the, the art degree and, and the sense of photography, you know, and, but uh, it's the only, it's the only, uh, honestly, it was the only topic still to this date that has not bored me. And so that's, that's, you know, but I came in very late as well. So. <laughs> that's a lot of case. I feel like people come in late, you know, I think it's intimidating because again, like with the whole, like, oh, art's not, you're not going to be successful or, you know, like it's not a money making field, you know, but that's not what it's about with most of us, you know, so yeah. people just find it later. It like sneaks up on you. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, um, and, and, and it's funny because in our classes, you know, I've always been one of the older students, if you will. And so it's kind of, you know, listening to listen to the younger generation around me. And I'm kind of like, oh, that's that's an interesting way to think of things. So they you know, it's it's kind of you're, you're in this one realm and they're kind of talking about things in another realm. And you're kind of like, well, that's yeah, I guess you can look at things that way. So it's, it's, you know, it's adaptability has definitely been uh, my strongest suit as far as being able to, uh, to, to make it in the art world and, and make it. Yeah, you could learn a lot from us. Exactly. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, yes. <laughs> actually, right. And you guys keep me young. I like it. You guys keep yes, me young. yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like, just like a huge community. It's so great. Yeah. Definitely. So obviously you guys have a huge love for art and I think we all do. I love art, Lana loves art, like we all love it. But was there a specific event in your life or like a moment that made you decide like your topic, like your art topic, like for you, Andrea, like body positivity, was there something that triggered that and you, yeah. said you needed to tell people your message? Yes, um, <clears throat> I was in, I, so I got my master's before I got into my master's of fine art because I came in so late, I wasn't ready to jump in. So I took like a post pack. So when I was there, you know, I'm inspired by anyone I meet, you know, and when you're in art school, like you're surrounded by all these creativity, like people, like creative people, you know, and their brains. And it's just amazing how people think and like, I soak it all in. So all these, um, you know, all my other like peers were doing these amazing things with their voice and their art and you know I <clears throat> went into it I had inspiration from my marine biology past and then I started to um you know come in with my fashion past too as like trying to when I was into fashion design so I kind of mixed that all in and then I was giving an artist talk one day and I realized like you know I'm looking at couture a lot when I was more in getting in my fashion and spo from, and I was like, well, these models don't look like me, you know, like I wouldn't see someone in my body in this kind of couture fashion on the runways or anything, you know? So I was like, you know what? I, I know me personally the best and I know I could use my voice through my art and kind of shine on a community and around that time was the big body positivity movement too. So I was like, this is great. It made me feel better. And it was nerve wracking to like put yourself like, you know, on display pretty much. But, um, you know, it was a journey and I'm still going through this journey on my body of work with the body positivity and everything. Like we're both me and my ceramics, we're, you know, we're on this journey going together and trying to find like, you know, 
self-love and self-acceptance and you know and I just hope like on the way to like I could bring other people on this journey as well like as I've been doing for myself so yeah, it takes a while but <laughs> you get there yeah <laughs> and then Fred you mentioned that you worked a lot with um like working with like Joshua Trees and you know making paper and you know really displaying the you know the impact of that do you think it stems from you know your past with you know um, environmental studies or, you know, how did that come about? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because I've always looked at my work as a way of catharsis. And so, um, meaning that, you know, when I was younger, my, my mother passed away when I was eight and a half, my father passed away when I was 17. And so in order to be able to deal with that trauma as a young, as a young adult, I would very much go out into the wilderness and walk. And that was, you know, very much my, my comforting area and my area of where I would, uh, kind of reflect and, and kind of look back on things. But, um, you know, and when finally I moved to the high desert um, where Joshua trees are at, um, the landscape still kind of offered that, that idea of catharsis and that idea of kind of escape in a way to kind of, you know, reflect and, and heal those wounds. But what I started noticing was that um, uh, this encroachment of, of, of human development and these, these landscapes were being taken away. And, and this urbanization of the, the, the desert started happening. And so, you know, that's what kind of, um, kind of triggered me as far as being able to say, wait a minute, what's going on here, right? Like, why am I feeling like this? And so it was that trauma of, you know, not only my childhood, but also, um, you know, what happened in, in, in my adult life. And, you know, as, as a wildland firefighter, as, you know, many know, like, we're not really worried about the environment, we want to be able to put out the fire and, and, and move on and, and so on and so forth. And these areas um, um, don't get to, don't get to, you know, uh, uh, be saved in the way that, you know, um, artistically, right? And so um, the way that uh, I, I, I kind of include my work now into this whole idea is through being able to, you know, show this trauma and show this, 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 this way over this landscape that is, that is lacking. Because Joshua trees are only endemic into the uh, um, Mojave Desert. And so once they're gone, they're gone. And so that's the, the, the major reason as to why. And that, um, you know, it's, it's this idea of catharsis and this memory and this um, history of it. Mm -hmm. well, you know, I love hearing about other people's, you know, projects and ideas, because I think one thing that's really interesting about art is that you know, we've got someone who's working with, you know, Joshua Trees and someone with body positivity, and there's so many different topics to explore. And I love how it's individual to each person, you know, like art is really, I mean, we say it all the time, art is subjective, um, but it really is not only to the creator, but to the receiver. And I think, you know, that's something that's, at least for me, really appealing to art. Um, I guess one question I have um, is, you know, you hear a lot about like people's different backgrounds in art and I feel like it can be anywhere from, you know, freelance all the way to, you know, got my BA and then, you know, I went freelance or, you know, went, found a career. Um, so do you think, I guess this goes to both of you, how necessary is an MFA when, you know, trying to pursue a career in art, whether it be, you know, working on your own art, being a professor or, you know, finding, you know, a career, you know, with employment somewhere, you know, how important is having your master's in fine art? I think, you know, I think it's, I get this question a lot, um, like, oh, why are you in art school? Like, why can't you just promote yourself, you know? And, <laughs> you know, really, like, I'm just like, um, when I look back before I went to art school, like, my art was, I don't think I could cuss, but, you know, my art was not good. Like, you know, like, and, and like being with these, you know, our professors are working artists in the, like, you know, in the field and like, they know they've been, you know, showing their work all these years. They know like what's good and like, um, I'm learning from them. You know, our faculty is like awesome and they're big name people in the art world. <laughs> and, and I get to work with them and learn from them and really, fine tune my work you know like 
outside of art school, you're not going to get critiques. Like Fred, I'm sure like, I mean, <laughs> have you had many critiques on your work? Like it's hard. Like this is like a set schedule. I learn different techniques. I learn how to polish my concept. I learn how to talk in front of people. I learn how to, you know, engage with students and everything. And this is all you learn in art school and you can't learn it, you know, outside. Like even something simple as like making a artist statement like I don't know you know like you really learn all this stuff like even to give an artist talk like they're so different than other talk you know it's just you learn all this stuff that I don't think you can learn you know in you know not in school like I feel like me getting my MFA has really made me to be the artist that I want to become yeah. so kind of expanding on that is there anything for you personally that the MFA program didn't prepare you for or didn't teach you or that hasn't or hasn't yet yeah so it's you know when you it's intimidating like I gotta say like you know when I remember my first crit <laughs> you can't take things personally like you know they're not talking about you as a person they're talking about your work and it's hard to separate yourself from your work you know, so that is not taught, you know, like people say it, but that's something you have to go through, you know, and um, you just got to learn that everyone's here for you and like they're here to like help you become the better artist that you will be. So that, that was, I was not ready for all that. <laughs> uh, as far as that question is concerned for me, I think it was a sacrifice. Right. The yeah. Sacrifice to be able to, you know, separate yourself from family and friends and just kind of just totally immerse yourself into your idea of the artwork and kind of remove yourself from everything else and have that time. I think that was one of the things that um, was always kind of mentioned, but really never kind of, you know, really put forward in that idea of going to uh, for an MFA program. And so you know, that was, that was probably the biggest thing that I, I think was kind of caught me off guard because it was the time needed to be able to prepare, you know, especially for a thesis or putting work together, artist statements, right? Because you need to be able to think clearly and cohesively and be able to put your thoughts together. And so um, it was, that was the biggest challenge for me. But, you know, going back to the original question about as far as do you need an MFA um, to, to have any kind of a, a, a career. Um, it's, it's, it's a slippery slope. You know, there are those artists that have been able to make it without a formal uh, advanced degree like that, right? And so, um, you know, if your art is that good, yeah. But what MFA, what an MFA program allows you to do is it allows you to experiment. It allows you to it gives you that guidance, like Andrea was saying, to be able to formalize and put your thoughts together and be able to present your work in a, co in a, in a coherent way that, you know, that's, you know, and, and to be able to be critiqued, right? Because, you know, you might come into an MFA program thinking that everything is, is fine and dandy. And at the end of your first critique, you're just like, oh my God, what in the world am I doing here? Right? And th these, these moments happen. These moments happen. But the, the, the beauty of the MFA program is that it gives you um, multiple avenues afterwards, right? You can become an artist. You can go into any kind of a, 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 a field that you want to be curating. You can go into, you know, museum studies. You can go into teaching, right? You really can't, unfortunately, you really can't teach at the college level without an advanced degree. And I think that that's probably one of the biggest things that an MFA uh, degree gives um, gives a candidate if they if that's the the, the path that they want to go, right? and then you know also you know once you become a professor you have access to facilities right facilities that you wouldn't ordinarily ordinarily have right because like and as Andrea notes space is valuable right oh, you yeah. need space to be able to work right so you know it's it's you know and so being at being and that's that's the other opportunity is having full you know free reign to be able to work and be able to play. Yeah. And that's what you get in an MFA program is all the space and access, especially at our at CSUSB. We have a lot of space, you know, and it's so open to like, you could, it, you know, 
um, one of my professors, Allison Petty, she always says like, this is your playground. And it literally is. And, you know, you don't get that on the, you know, when you don't go into a grad program. So it's, it's really nice that I have these kilns that are like four feet tall, or I have a CNC machine, you know, like, I'm like, I can't, I don't have that like chilling in my garage somewhere, you know, but like, it's so, it's, so it's nice to like, get your hands into everything at a school. Mm -hmm. Because you could come into school with an idea like, I'm going to be a painter, you know, and you're like, I'm paint, like, that's my medium. And then you come in, you're like, oh, let me touch on this, like, clay, or let me go into wood or, you know, photography. And then you're, you change completely as a person and an artist, you know, and going off of what Fred said, like, sacrificing, like, you know, like, you're giving three years just to your art and like to your peers and your professor, you know, and it's hard. Like you go in and out of relationships, like you don't see people, you know, that you see normally in your life. And, you know, so it's, it's so time consuming, but um, you, ch you grow a lot as a person. Yeah. yeah. You, really, Definitely. you really, really do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's funny when you think of art, at least like for me, um, you think of it as very much like a solitary um, experience, you know, like you're sitting by yourself in a studio or like, you know, I know Andrea, you mentioned, you know, having that support group, but at the same time, you know, your art is super like individual to you. So it's something that you yourself need to work on. Um, but at the same time, you have this whole system of, you know, critiques and, you know, talking to other people about your art. Um, so it's kind of like this weird dichotomy where it's like, I'm working on this by myself, but I need, you know, help from other people. Um, and at the same time, I feel like a lot of art field is, you know, talking with others. You know, what's the point of having your art if you're not sharing it? Um, so I guess kind of on that note, how important is networking within the art field? I think it's super important. Like, you know, we have this, like, we have Instagram, social media, you know, you have all this extra tools to help you get out there. Like, especially like we can't do that now, but when art openings is you know, it's not only just to go see the art in the show, but it's to network. Mainly people go there to network a lot. So um, it's it's really good to, we have all these extra tools versus, you know, back then was just like, you gotta mail your slides in and everything. Um, but yeah, like, it's great. Um, I personally, like, I, I go through every, when I have a crazy idea or anything, I like talk to everyone I know. I go to my best friends first, you know, I'm like, I got this idea, you know, cause my work is personal, but also it's universal. Cause I'm talking about a broad, you know, community of a group and my best friends know that, you know? And so like, I go to them first. So I network with them first <laughs> and I'm like, what, what should it, is, does this like, is this cool? Like, does this make sense? You know? And then after that, I go to like my art people <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm gonna do this, you know? And so I'm like collaborating ideas off of everyone I meet and you know, any chance I could get to talk about art, like I'm gonna dive in and talk about it. But yeah, it's just great to like have all these social media and like art events that you go to, even like artist talks too. Like I was just in one um, earlier today and it's just nice just to see like this network of artists, like really great artists, you know, and it's just like all this, everyone has these great creative minds that you could literally just like pick at. Yeah, and you know, to add to that, you know, without networking, you know, you, you're, you're removing yourself from that sense of community, right? Yeah. And so, you know, once you do graduate, you, you have to network to be able to keep up that community because you know we're all gonna we all tend to go our own ways we all are focused on our own things we end up getting jobs whatever the case may be but without the ability to network i think that you know as far as as far as my career has been concerned um i wouldn't have had the opportunities to know about certain shows or to be in you know publications or whatever the case may be and then whatever and then also um um you know, being able to, to, you know, offer my ideas to someone else and they offer that feedback, you know, uh, back to us is, is, is something that's really, really, really nice. Right. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we're, we're doing this right now. We're sharing ideas. We're sharing our thoughts. We're sharing, you know, these things and that someone's going to be able to take away from 
whatever we're saying today and be like, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's right. That was, that was, that's a good idea. Right? Mm-hmm. So. And it's hard. I bet I'm scared when I graduate and I'm like, who am I going to talk to? <laughs> like, yeah, there's, there, there definitely, there definitely is a level of un, uh, uncertainty, right? And you kind of, once you're cast out, it's like, okay, well, you're done. And they push you out the doors and then you're kind of like, yeah. All right. Now I'm out here, you know, I'm out here in the wilderness kind of, right? So, you know, but they've, they've given you the tools to be able to fend for yourself, right? And to be able to defend yourself. That's what the whole idea of critique does is to be able to defend your ideas and yes. be able to, you know, work through uh, the, 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 the possible problems that they're pointing, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, that's the, the, the beauty at the, at the backside of the MFA program. Um, I, I really think, you know, and this idea of networking, absolutely. Before the MFA, I was very much an introvert, you know, and now look at me, I'm, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you know, so it's, 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 you know, and that's, and that's, you know, and that's what, that's what it does, right? That's what it does. It kind of, you know, gets you to get out of your shell and you have, you gain a, a sense of confidence in your work and in, in, in the person that you want to be. Mm-hmm. So we kind of talked about how important networking and kind of like social media plays into art. What can you guys tell me about actually kind of having like meeting one person that kind of changes everything for you, like making those right connections at the right time and kind of making that first impression that ends up excelling your career. Do you guys have any experiences like that you'd like to share? Actually, yeah. You know, um, you know, when I graduated with my undergrad, uh, my BA in studio art from Cal State, um, I, you know, as a way of kind of staying in the loop with things, I kept in touch with my my professors at the time. And so um, Sant Casa had um, was kept in contact. She used to be the department chair and, her, and a, a professor in the, in the photo department. Um, got me in touch with a program called Postcards from America that Magnum Photo Agency was putting on in 2013 and through that through that program i was able to meet um some well-known photographers including jim goldberg um alessandra senugetti uh uh, moses saman and mark power and i had worked with mark power during that program or during that during his trip here for two weeks and um because of because of that um experience he um as of 2019 asked me to accompany him to the Pacific Northwest for an entire month. And so I was able to take an entire month and be able to photograph with a professional photographer and um, experience what it's like working on, working as a photographer on the road for an entire month. And so, you know, those, those opportunities don't, don't present themselves to just, you know, anyone. And so, you know, I'm very thankful for, you know, that, that idea of being able to stay in contact with people and, um, um, you know, has, has, has it, it paid off in the end. Yeah. Staying in contact is really, really important. Like in grad school, we get visiting artists all the time. We'll invite like a artist to come in, give a talk and then critique our work. And I've got through a lot of connections through that. They're always like, email me, you know, like let's keep in touch. And we just have every semester, um, you know, we have someone like that would come in and it's so important to keep in touch and keep emailing because you don't know like what will happen after that. And, you know, we get to see like inside their world and like how they think and, you know, so e- keeping in touch is so important because, you know, there's so many people in the art world that you'll lose face. But if you just like keep in touch with that one person, that's going to take you um, to different directions. That's awesome. Thank you guys for sharing all this information. I think we all kind of had all these questions and we actually really loved hearing your experiences. But we are going to start kind of transitioning to our Q&A section. So for those in the audience, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and type it in the chat. But to kind of kick things off, we do have a pre-submitted question for both of you guys. So do you have any advice for students who are thinking about pursuing an art degree, whether it's a BA or an MFA? Like, what do you wish you knew and, like, someone told you? That's, ooh, that's a loaded question. (laughs) That's a a loaded question. I don't think, I don't think I, I, you know, I don't think I, uh, I I would have gone about it any other way, right? Yeah. Um, As far as my journey um, 
through uh, my degrees and, and through the art community. Um, the one thing or one piece of advice that I would offer anyone that is, you know, contemplating a school uh, or, you know, or uh, an advanced degree is do your research, right? Yeah. Do your research, make sure that that's the school that you want to go to, because it is a commitment, right? It is a commitment. Make sure that the faculty are the, the, the faculty that's going to be right for you, that's going to help you grow. Right. You want people that want that are going to challenge you, not people that are always just going to agree with you because, you know, you don't you don't grow in that kind of environment. Yeah. Um, next, I would say, look at facilities, visit the campus. Right. Cal State San Bernardino has some of the best facilities in the entire Cal State system. And that is no joke. Right. Yeah. And so and, 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 and the space that 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 Cal State has. Right. San Bernardino has. And so, you know. That was one of the, the, the real reasons why I came back for my MFA is because I knew what it offered, right? And lastly, make sure that, you know, you have enough room to be able to play, right? When, you know, you think about this idea of playing, Andrea's kind of talked about it a couple of times, but, you know, playing is how we all first learned, right? When you were sitting as a little kid, you know, you learned your colors by how? By playing. You learned your shapes by playing, Right. It's the same thing. It's it's the oldest way we 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 we've, we've learned how to learn, right? Is through playing. So you know, go to a go to a, a campus, go to a program that's going to allow you to play, right? And to experiment. That's the greatest thing, right? Have fun with it, right? But be prepared for the commitment. I was going to say everything you just said, Fred. You took it out of my mouth. <laughs> Research, you know, like really study. I was in between MFA programs before I choose uh, CSUSB and literally what came down when I came to tour onto this campus was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, like the facilities, the all-star professors that I'm going to be learning under, like um, what was really important to me, to me was how many women were professors here. Cause like that's, I want to learn under, you know, women, uh, women's um, and it just like I study the faculty I like looked them up I was like being a stalker you know but you know that's just what you know what you want um also come open-minded you know I would think if you're thinking about getting an art degree do it you know obviously there's that something in you that you're like maybe but also especially if it's your undergrad like you could take all these art classes you need some anyway so like really find what you like and you know, stick with it. Like me with ceramics, like I was coming in a science background and I took ceramics and I was like, this is it, you know? So it, it's okay. And you know, the one thing that's great about school is that you always go back, you know, like you could go pursue something else and realize it's not you. And then you, school's always going to be here. So you could come back and go to grad school, and, you know? So that, that's, that's really cool about school is that you can come at whatever age, huh? So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I always kind of say I have like a, a soft transition into art because I came in, I came in as kinesiology actually. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I kind of share that with you, Andrea, about having, you know, that science background. Um, I stuck with it for like three years <laughs> before I decided, you know, maybe art was it, but I always had an art minor. You know, mm -hmm. one thing I always really liked is I remember, you know, sitting down in my first art class and like, there's this huge room, there's these huge tables to work on, you know, um, there's all sorts of like different things in the corners of the rooms. I had no clue what it did. And, you know, um, <laughs> you know, it's always super exciting because you're like, you know, it, it really is, you know, like this tactile experience, you know, like playing, you know, hands-on and really experimenting, you know, like for me, whenever I sit down in a new art classroom, it's like, I can't wait to use, you know, all the new stuff and just to experience it. And that's what really, you know, pushed me into, you know, maybe kinesis isn't for me, you know, maybe, you know, art's the way to go, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, great decision. <laughs> <laughs> so, we received a question, and this question is from Miranda. Do you recommend going straight into the MFA program after, after your undergrad, or do you recommend taking some time off after you graduate? I think it's more a question for Fred, or, or actually for both you guys, actually. Well, you you know, um, that's, that's an interesting question. You know, I, I would say yes. I think that you do need to have some time um, uh, uh, away from school, kind of understand, get a little bit of experience underneath your belt before going back, right? 
um, because, you know, because of that idea of a commitment, right? If you really want to pursue an advanced degree in art, you really have to go all in. There's no, you know, uh, just, you know, kind of dabbling with it and just kind of leaving it alone, right? You really have to be all in. And so, you know, I think that, you know, to be able to get away and kind of, you know, well, what can I do with my BA, right? And then, you know, the more you look out there and you realize that, hey, you know, BA is, yeah, it's a four-year degree, but I'm not, I can't teach. I'm not able to teach. I'm not able, you know, maybe I can, I can, I can run a, a, a how-to session at like a county park or something, but, um, you know, as far as, as far as being um, hired as a professor or whatever, you, you know, yeah, no, you, you know, you definitely need an advanced degree. But, um, you know, I think you should experiment or experience, you know, uh, life away from school for a little bit before going back, right? Because that way you can kind of formulate an idea as, as, as far as do you really, really want this? Yeah, I, so for me personally, I, I came late into the art world. So, um, so I, my previous professor advised me to take my post back, my MA, so I have a master's in art. So that's a two year program. So I really took that time to really, you know, narrow down my concept and really build up my portfolio. So I took that two years, you know, um, the thing with ceramics, this doesn't happen with anyone, but with ceramics is a big studio base. Um, or I need a studio, I need my kilns, I need the space, I need my glazes, you know. Um, so what was great was that I could get that two years to really build my portfolio and use the school's facilities as well as getting another degree, you know. So I took that time to really experience and make my work really solid so I can get into an MFA program. So um, every, you know, I, I wouldn't think of that as, you know, taking um, you know, time off because I was still in a school setting. I was still getting another degree, my first master's, but, um, you know, I, I took that time to like really like know, is this what I want to do? Because you're committing, especially with MFA, you're committing three years nonstop of your life, you know, so that really helped me. And if it's, you know, getting, you know, another degree before, you know, the MFA or taking the time off, like, it's just nice to like, really know like this is for me this is what i want to do so, so did you guys ever say because I, I say it all the time like oh i'm never going back to school did you say that when you were getting your ba like oh i'm never going back i'm done like is that something that you guys said absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> no go ahead I said it, I said it after I had my <laughs> AA, right? So as I had my AA, I was like, I'm done, done, that's it, I got a degree, right? But you 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 you, you gain an appetite for it, right? You get kind of hungry for it. And you get hungry for knowledge and you get hungry for that idea of, of um, you know, that, that community and that, 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 that degree. And you want more and you want more and you want to learn more until you get to the pinnacle, right? And, and you know, through the whole process, what it is, it's, it's just teaching you how to learn. And so now that once you're done with that pinnacle degree, you're, you know, you, you're constantly still learning. I'm still just, you know, always hungry for more information, always eager to learn new things and new ways and new techniques and ideas and, and things like that. So yeah, absolutely. But um, yeah, I, after my A, I was like, hey, I'm done. I got my A, right? I'm done. Yay. Got my BA. Yeah. Woo. Got two degrees. I'm good. We're done. Right. Done. And I got my MFA. And I'm like, well, should I go for a doctorate? I don't know. Right? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm in the same position. I'm, I love school. Let me tell you that I've been in school I, from preschool to now I have nonstop. Like I've been, I haven't had a break, you know, but, um, you know, I'm coming up my last year and now I'm like thinking, I'm like, should I get a PhD? <laughs> you know, like, I'm just like, uh. but, um, I get hungry for it. I just love like the endless possibilities that school has for you. So we have one more question and after this question we're going to close how will you keep up your studio practice after you graduate and i think this is more of a question for andrea oh okay um let's see <laughs> you know my ideal is to have like a home studio so because i like working weird hours 
feel like I work throughout the night a lot. Um, I feel like that's when I get the best ideas. Um, so that's my ideal, but it's hard because especially if I want to start building big, I need big kilns and I don't have like access to that or like room. So the great thing about ceramics, since I mainly work in ceramics, is that there's like community uh, studios or you, ceramics is a huge on community as well. Um, I'm still in touch with all my ceramics friends from CSUN, you know, and unfortunately I'm the only ceramics grad here at um, CSUSB, but like we always joke around like, oh, let's do our own studio and like make our own, you know, so it's great to like keep in touch with your old peers because, you know, something great can come up with that, but um, I do plan on teaching after this and, you know, I'm probably going to be a studio rat and like stay around and use this facilities wherever I teach. But my idea is to, um, you know, have a home studio or a communal studio so I can invite, you know, all my peers to we can all collaborate together because that's how we were, you know, ceramics is very tight. Um, so it would be great just to have that. That's my idea. <laughs> my dream. Awesome, thank you. And I have a question for you, Mr. Brashear. How did you keep up your studio practice after you graduated? Since, you know, might as well do the comparison. Like, how did you do it? <laughs> uh, you know, um, it was touch and go, right? It was touch and go. Um, you know, uh, obviously, again, that idea of sacrifice, right? Needed some space, so move things in the garage, move things out of the garage. Um, I occupy currently, this is my office space, this is my studio space now. Um, in my house, right? So now, you know, I've kind of emulated that that environment that we find in, in photo uh, classrooms as far as the metal wall and being able to put things up and, you know, very much I'll close the door and, you know, talk to myself and, you know, my 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 <laughs> wife and my, my my children are kind of like, is he okay? Like, who, who are you talking to? And it's like, oh, I'm just talking to myself, you know? And so, yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. But, uh, you know, it's, um, it, it was it was a space thing right and so you know especially when the pandemic hit and not being on campus mm -hmm. facilities anymore um you know making investments purchasing printers and computers and scanners and and film and developing in the bathroom and doing whatever it may be right and so um yeah that's that's pretty much how i kept up my studio practice you gotta document that all that sounds so interesting <laughs> <laughs> i want to see <laughs> <laughs> bathroom studio <laughs> yes right absolutely but th that's the thing it, it goes up and then it's got to be down right because i know you're it, like oh kids gotta take a bath <laughs> exactly exactly right exactly that's <laughs> like you know constantly uh, it's occupied occupied you know, <laughs> don't come <laughs> <don't> here <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not allowed in the downstairs bathroom if my dad is developing film oh yeah <laughs> you don't go in there you just do not go in there yeah, not allowed to go in there. <laughs> I'm so glad. So thank you guys so much for showing up for our podcast today. We loved having you guys. Super interesting talk. I love this talk. Yeah. It's one of our most interesting ones so far. But with that being said, we are going to go ahead and close this podcast session. So thank you guys again and have an amazing day. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. It was so good to see Bye. you, Fred. It was good seeing you, too. Yeah. All right, thanks everyone. All right, bye. Thank Take you care. Thank you so much for coming.